All right, so as part of the step, during the analysis, there are several things that will be saved, of course. Uh, in your model, uh, you will save lots of information. So this, if you remember, we mentioned that our model is saved uh, in a .caE file, which is the model database file. And in the same time, once we run the analysis, Abacus will generate a .odb file, which is the output database a file which contains pretty much the analysis results. So this file can be huge depending on the size of your model and depending on the amount of uh, informations, uh, information results that you are saving. So it's very critical and it's very important that you don't save everything. You only save the stuff or the data that you really are interested in. So if you go here in this uh, model tree or even from here you can access this over here from this icon or from the model tree you see that you have two things here there is the field output request and there is the history output request now the field output request by default you have this f dash output dash one this is how it's called by default that it's by default it's created and if you right click on that and you click edit so in this one uh, this F field output, this says pretty much what going to be saved for what during the analysis. So right now you see that this is for the loading step that we just created. And it says here that the domain that this is going to be saved for the whole model. And it will be saved every N increment. So every N increment we are going to get uh, an output. So this is by default and by default for this case over here you see in this model tree you have all the field variables so these are called field variables field variables are pretty much all the variables like stresses forces uh, energy values strain values that you can uh, get out of your model so by default you have those ones selected okay like under stresses if you click on this over here you see that by default S or the stress components and invariants are, will be saved. That's it. Uh, over here, uh, strains again, you have different types of strains by default will be saved. The equivalent plastic strain, the plastic strain components, the plastic strain magnitude and so on. So many, many things were going to be saved. Contact, contact stresses and so on. So perhaps some of these you don't care about or you are not going to investigate those. So perhaps you can unclick some of those since you don't need them. So for instance, the contact stress, I don't need this. So I can just click on that and then it will be removed. As you see here, you have the abbreviations for some of these field variables and pretty much you can remove them directly from here or you can just unclick from uh, this model tree. Uh, for instance, maybe I don't need the PE mag or the magnitude of the plastic strain. I don't need that. Strain components. I don't need the strain components. U, I need U because U is the uh, displacements. So I need the displacements. Yeah, I need to read the displacement after I finish. S, yes, these are the stresses. I need to read the stresses. So I want this to be there. Uh, reaction forces, yeah, perhaps I would like to know the re reaction forces and read the reaction forces from my model at the supports, so I will keep those. So by removing some of these things and keeping the things that I'm interested in, I save time and I save space and time and computational time as well. And in the same time, you can specify that uh, where, how, uh, when do you want to save this, so you can save it every n increment or you can save it every X unit of time, or you can save it every equally spaced time interval. So there are many ways or at specific time points. Okay, so by default, I will leave it here uh, like this, like save every N increment. But ideally when I'm dealing with a very large uh, model, I can uh, set this to be like to save at specific time uh, increments. 
that I would like. So this is to save in, again, as we mentioned, in computational time and in size. So then I will click OK. So that's it. So now I define the field output. So this is will save everything uh, in my model. There is as well the history output. So the history output, this is if you want to tell Abacus to save a specific data for a specific point. Okay, so basically the idea here is that after you finish the analysis, you will have, let's say for instance, uh, the displacement. So you will have the displacement of all the points in your model. And in order to get the displacement for a specific point, let's say that we want to get the displacement at the end of the beam, so I will need to go to the results and then I need to tell Abacus I selected the point and then I say, okay, I want the displacement for this point and then Abacus will generate the data history for this point. But instead of doing this every time, reselecting the point and reselecting the type of field variable that I want to save, this can be a time consuming. Perhaps if every time, every time I run this model, I'm interested in the displacement, for instance, at a given point, then you can create a history output. So if I click on history output, this is something that you can give it a name. So let's say displacement, this beam end. And I want to save this in the uh, during the loading step because you might have many steps. And then I say continue. And then you don't want to save this for the whole model. So you can select a set. So if you have already defined the set, we haven't done this, of course, but we will see this in a second uh, if you created the set you can just go here select the name of the set which could be like this point and then you say okay from this i want you to save the displacement in the two directions so you have one two three two means uh, is the one corresponding to the y direction so i want to save you two and then you can click ok so this means that during the analysis Abacus will generate independently this history output, which you can access directly after you finish the analysis. All right. So this is the difference between a history output and a field uh, output. Uh, so this concludes this video. And in the next one, we are going to go through the interaction and pretty much how these different parts are connected to each other.